parthenogenesis debunked. What they don't tell you is they can make they can make their own sperm from failed eggs, after the polar bodies. They come from the same same cell, one main same uh, uh, gamete, one main egg, and the rest are failed polar bodies. They're usually useless, except in some cases if they some cases can become more like sperm, more active. More active gene expression. There's much evidence that shows much gene expression, and mostly from the sperm, is a huge player. These are not unfertilized eggs, like they keep saying. These are self-fertilized eggs from the same organs, as opposed to others that have both hermaphrodites that have both organs. The, some can produce the different gametes from the same organs or release more sperm. The whiptail lizard, for on the other hand, and other some other examples, gametes are fused, two nucleuses. One produces the built the yolk and guidance protein for embryonic development. The other produces epigenetic gene expression from the parent. Again, they don't show you this more common way of parthenogenesis. See, these the poor bodies don't have tails like a sperm. That's because they don't have to make a long journey uh, from one body to another as, mo as male sperm does. Insects are specifically ants and bees. Their larval stage is pretty close to their embryonic stage. See, in pupa stage, their bodies actually melt and rebuild from these imaginal discs the, with the adult gene expression. However, these discs might, might be plausible that these discs can be stimulated manually, either maybe through intentional rubbing or you know, or uh, hormonal injections, but there are some explanations at least. Ants and bees are the only insects to use haploid males. Wasps can even produce triploid males. Maybe this might be because of parental care that uh, the ants can afford it, to do this. We know different roles in a colony depends on how they are fed and stimulated during embryonic, during larval stage. So, and even then, when they come out of their pupa, they're guided to their jobs. Even then, they're guided to their jobs. See this one, this ant right here looking at the others. Ants do uh, seem to have some sort of Guy, like say supervisors or more experienced ants, use the older law distribution of work. Depends on their age anyway. So the ants are the reason why. I'm See, it's the reason why even though male bees are bigger and can even see better than the workers, they don't do any work. Because they're not guided to do any work, they're not taught to do any work, or sent to or commanded to. They don't imprint on their that job. Social constructs are actually common in nature. They depend on a lot of signals and environments. Aphids are actually born pregnant. They might be using the same developmental hormones in two generations. Is sharing the same signals. And that experiment done with mice, uh, doing an embryo can uh, gene blockers or right, inhibitors also work as promoters uh, of the surrounding genes in an act in a hyperactive cell.
what they did when they took an embryonic stem cell and silence uh, the genes, many genes, hundreds of genes in three specific sections. So guess that the cells are hyperactive by default, it would turn on other genes. The scientists reported 20 of uh, 229 of 200 mice, no, 120 mice, one, sorry, 120 mice were healthy, came out healthy. That could be due to control conditions, lack of stress. We know one thing they don't, we know one thing they don't tell you about cloning is they often have a lot of health problems from delayed development, uh, met metabolic disorders, irregular heartbeat, mental retardation, bones are prone to breaking but not so good on healing, all because they were not taken from sperm. Sperm, which gets, sperm gets signals from all over the body, the seminal cord, why, so, why the area is so sensitive. The reason the two sperm mice all died, because they did it completely wrong, they mostly removed genes, but in different sperms, but not about gene removal, it's about gene expression, bring strands of RNA, and transcription factors where they are. All the sperm really needs is a large cell, it's ribosomes to print out its proteins, in fact, in a large cell body, with embryonic the guidelines proteins from the egg. So here's another question. Is it plausible that before one of these male gametes develop into an egg, you use hormones to have it develop, you know, develop into a sperm, use hormones to have it develop into an egg, and the sperm you already have fertilize your own egg? Reverse what you started with. I mean before it becomes a sperm, you use chemical manipulate hormonal signals manipulation to have it become an egg. Here's another thing they say about parthenogenesis in Turkey. They don't make it past the embryonic stage unless specially bred to have a special gene have the specific gene expression.